I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R710 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R710 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. Uh, this video will be specifically focused on solid state drives for your R710 server. So here's what we're gonna do in this video as it holds. We're gonna show you the different compatible types of solid state drives for your 11th gen server. We're gonna show you the max speeds, the max sizes. We're gonna show you how to actually physically install one, which is super easy because it's a hot swap drive. We're gonna show you uh, uh, how to uh, test at the very end with a tool called HD Sentinel. Uh, what we actually do is we will plug in a storage array to our server uh, and we'll actually test it separately standalone. Uh, we'll run HD Sentinel just to let you know the power on hours and the health score. So it's a nice test outside of Dell Diagnostic, which is a great test as well. And the two tests that I would recommend to test your SSDs, especially if you're buying a used one or if you just want to verify that you have a new one that has uh, no power on hours as a whole. So, all right, well, let's, uh, let's hop in. The uh, compatible types of solid state drives are going to be SAS and SATA. Now there are some advantages with SATA over SAS, and that's specifically, or excuse me, with SAS over SATA, and that's specifically the speed. Now there, I guess, there are some advantages for SATA over SAS. It's cheaper, so depending on what you want, if you want the extra speed, it'll cost more, um, and you're going to pay a little bit more for the SAS. But let's get into the speed. So with a SATA solid-state drive, you can get three gigabit per second, and that's going to be the max that it will top out with your 11th gen server. Whereas with a SAS solid-state drive, you can get six gigabit per second, and that's again going to be uh, SAS only and that's for your 11th gen server. Now the uh, max sizes that you can get will be the same uh, either way whether it's SAS or SATA and you can put 7.68 terabytes per individual uh, drive slot so that's pretty nice storage overall. Now I'm going to show you how to install it and then show you how to test it with HD Sentinel. All right, now that I have my ESD gear, we are safe to work on our R710 server. So first things first, we're just gonna pop the latch, just gonna push the red circle. Your uh, latch is gonna pop open and you're just gonna slide your drive out. It is a very, very simple upgrade as a whole. So now we are gonna put in our SSD. So same thing, we're gonna pop the latch and we are gonna slide this in and it will just click into place. But one thing I wanted to note, I'm gonna pull this back out is if you are using a 3.5 inch or a large form factor chassis, you do need to make sure that you have your adapter or your converter. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a 2.5 inch drive. And let's just for fun, why not? It doesn't fit. <laughs> so realistically, you just gotta make sure that you have the right uh, tray with the right adapter. And if you go to our website, we offer both for the 710 so that you just make sure that you get the right thing. So you can just pop it in and make it as easy as plug and play. So we're gonna actually show you real quick how to do it on the 2.5 inch as well, which is all, gonna be a very simple upgrade because again, it's just hot swap. All right, so just to show you the 2.5 inch again, just gonna pop the circle, pull your drive out. This is a, a 1.2 terabyte SAS, which is a pretty awesome drive as well, but definitely upgrading it to an SSD is gonna be way faster. So you're just gonna slide this in and literally it's just that simple of an upgrade. Uh, it is definitely one of the uh, best uh, upgrades for increasing your performance overall. I always tell people if you want to increase the performance of an older server like the 710, the best things you can do is upgrade your RAM and upgrade your SSD. Generally speaking, your CPU is ahead of everything else, so upgrading your RAM and SSD will definitely be the best upgrades for your performance overall. So now what we're going to do is show you how to test your SSDs or your hard drives for that matter with Dell Diagnostics. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen but you just want to go ahead and press yes 
and it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's gonna be tested. On the right hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue, or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. Alright, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning, but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.